Hello everyone and welcome back to Cook Serve Delicious 3. Uh, so off screen I did some metal grinding. I got at least a silver in uh, in all of the Idaho stages. And also, okay, I learned a little bit about like what these little uh, what these little words mean. These are like types of menus, if that makes sense. Like say for like one of these um Let's say like salad envy, envy, for example. What that means is that all of the salad items are going to be available for this mission. Yeah, see, organic salad, regular salad, and in fact, this is actually what the filters were for. Yeah, so like you know, tailgate traditions is a filter. So if you get like a mission that says tailgate traditions, all of these food will be available. Uh, and also, it kind of makes me a little concerned, because I know a couple of these are, like, the hard stuff. <laughs> Early memories. Yeah, a few of these are, like, uh, are, like, from, uh, from, like, other, uh, restaurants, too, from the second game. Dry through seconds, the food, uh, diet, belt loosener. Where is it? Complex solids. Oh, my God. We're gonna get something very late in that's just, like, you're only allowed to do these. Like, <laughs> God, that's all the, the stage five stuff. Uh, what is that king potato? <laughs> Wait, creme brulee is a five? It was a little tough in two, but it wasn't that hard. Deluxe poutine. Oh God, I dread. Oh, ramen and I got okay at in two as well. Okay, let's go ahead and like upgrade the truck a little bit. Cause I, as I was doing those, I did level up a little bit. I want to get another holding station. There we go. And I want to get this as well, because these, like, side upgrades tend to be pretty good. And I think that's all I can get for now. Uh, customize truck? Oh, yeah, I customized the truck even more. <laughs> this time what I did is I just filled the entire place up with, uh, with Sunday plushes, so I, I went even farther into this. Um... And apparently, that's the item limit. Uh, this is as many as you can have. Also, I got this item too. Um, I did the last mission of Idaho again because you know I got a silver and I want a gold in it. Um, and I got that cutscene again. And I hit sh I hit sure. Let's go this time. And it basically just like cut back to the map at that point. But it also gave me this item. So I guess you can put this item on your dashboard now if you want. I find a million plushes of Sunday, though. <laughs> okay, so let's continue looking around. Ah, okay, this is interesting. So the um, the the go the bronze medals are like these little meta requirements. Those are the medals you get in the region, not in not in total. Yeah, they're down here. I have 15 gold medals, but like it still says I have one out of four because I have one out of four in total here. Okay, that's good to know. Oh yeah, I also got an achievement off-screen for getting both a bronze and a silver rake on every level in any given region. Um, only 16 and 17% of players got that achievement. I'll probably get the gold one off-screen, I'm pretty close to it in this region anyway. Okay. So let's go to... Salad Envy. Okay, so we're gonna get a lot of salad items in this one. Yep, look, look, at, the, look at them, they're all the salad items right there. I want to see what this one does. A spicy salad made with shredded unripe papaya. Green papaya salad combines the five main tastes of Laotian cuisine. Sour lime, heart chili, salt, savory fish sauce, and sweetness added by palm sugar. As such, eating green papaya is a, is considered the closest one can get to tasting the true flavor of Laos with, uh, without physically consuming the country's soil, <laughs> vegetation, wildlife, and inhabitants. So that's a new item. We have plenty of money, too, so we can just, like, buy all of these if we want to. But this is a holding station item. What do we got? It's only this screen. We got peanuts, tomatoes, sunflower seed is S, that's easy. Green beans is E, that's consistent. Carrots. Mint flake is I, that's different. And then onions. I screwed it up. Okay, what I screw up? Tomato, green beans, carrots, cucumbers, mint flakes. Is there something else I have to do? 
Peanuts. Tomatoes. Carrots. Okay. I think I was just hitting M for Mint Flake, uh, like, like, by instinct, which is incorrect for that menu item. Okay, we'll add that, we'll add that. Oh, wait. Take off Taboule. Kachumbari, African Great Lake region. Kachubari <clears throat> was once the primary symbol of unity throughout much of Africa. The people of King, uh, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Uganda, Burinda, Malawi, and Congo were united in their, um... Actually, I think I've read this one, too. How do you make this one again? I just want to check real quick. Oh my god, the army of... <laughs> it's... I, I love the army of Sunday plushes. Okay, fair enough. And then one... Did we ever make organic salad in two? I know this was in two. In 1935, an unidentified disease swept through the English town of uh, Upton Snodsbury, causing hundreds of residents to cough, sneeze, and die. Remembering that the, um, that the nearby commercial farm was recently contaminated with a neighboring cologne factory sprung a leak, residents stopped purchasing vegetation out of fear that the uh, cologne w was causing the mysterious fatalities. As a result, locals began growing their own organic produce, making salads which uh, they believed were fresher and safer to eat than the ones covered in the factory's signature product. Mavi's Odair, 45, thankfully by uh, 1936, Mysterious' Myster death in the town were at an all-time low. Today, May descendants... There was a plane outside. Hold on a second. <laughs> Today, many descendants of Upton Snodsbury continue to exclusively eat organic produce out of fear that they too will cough, sneeze, and die. So why is this a rank 4? Vinaigrette. Okay. Mushroom, tomato, broccoli. Broccoli is typically like R or something, so that's different. Cucumber, apple, grape, strawberry, tangerine. There's a third page. Sunflower seed, avocado, blue cheese, almond, pecans. That doesn't seem too crazy, but there is some muscle memory I'll have to break in order to do this one. Alright, six point menu. Let's go ahead and try this. If this is too hard, we can pivot to like one of the easier salads. Only two stops here, too. So only three. I thought I messed up there. Oh, already halfway there? Okay. Tomato, green pepper, parsley, onion, avocado. Okay. Vinaigrette, tomato, cucumber, apple, onion, avocado. Well, that was easy. <laughs> Okay. 21? That's quite a, uh... <laughs> that's quite a jump. Oh, no. Not not this again. Uh... Okay, we gotta start these. Vinaigrette, cucumber, apple, grape, strawberry, tangerine, sunflower, avocado. Vinaigrette... Oh... I think I put the wrong one on. Uh, balsamic, mushroom, apple, grape, strawberry, sunflower, avocado. Oh no. Uh, sunflower, blue cheese, almond. I'm gonna get a bunch of bad- oh god. Balsamic, apple, grape, tangerine, sunflower, blue cheese. Hold on. Okay, let's just focus on these. Tomato, green beans, carrots, 
cucumber, mint flake, onion. Uh, tomato, green pepper, parsley, onion, avocado. Okay, we need some more of that. Tomato, green pepper, parsley, onion, avocado. More of that too. More of both of them. Peanuts, tomato, carrot, cucumber, mint flake, onion. Good. Tomato, green pepper, parsley, onion, avocado. God, oh my god. Uh, sunflower feet, tomato, green bean, cucumber, mint flake, onion. Tomato, green pepper, parsley, onion, avocado. And last one we need is this. Okay, that was... Organic salad was a bad idea to put on the menu. Like, a really bad idea. <laughs> Got a bronze, though. Not terrible. Not terrible. <laughs> Like, all of those bad orders we just got at the exact same time. I'm not sure if I caught this before, but apparently, um, you get more, um... Apparently you get more experience, like, depending on how harder an item you put on the menu is. Like, for example, putting organic salad probably got me a lot more points, or a lot more experience than, uh than, like, putting something else on wood. Ten-point menu. Burgers and patties, too much delicious. Oh, this is also something I kind of like about this game. If you want to, you really could just put a bunch of, like, one and zero stuff on, and then, uh, and then just beat the- and then j just get gold medals that way. It doesn't seem like there's that much reward for getting gold medals in this game compared to other ones, like, it's really just for bragging rights. So, like, I don't really mind it as much. At least they're not locking, like, interesting food behind it this time around, because that kind of annoyed me about, too. Hmm. Bitter Street. Five stops. So we're going to make a bunch of burgers on this one. Okay, and I need seven points. Hamburger is a rank 4, but I've had like three games worth of exper or experience with it, so... Let's try some of the burgers we haven't tried yet. We made both of these in the f in the first game. Yeah, I'm just gonna like practice it a couple times. And then I'll buy them, but I won't put them on the menu. Because, like, I, I might as well, like, buy a bunch of items that we had in the first two games, or in the second game. <laughs> Just so I have them on the menu so I can do them off screen. I feel like people are only going to care if, like, I'm trying new food I've never tried before. So chicken, lettuce, tomato, pickle, top bun. It's identical. Okay. So go ahead and purchase that. Do not put on the menu. Then grilled chicken sal salad is pretty identical as well. Now that I think about it, have I read either of those either? I remember I did a lot of them through, uh, through one of the, uh, one of the missions. Or through, like, one of the restaurants. I think it was the one that just sold, like, all chicken products. I don't think I ever, like, purchased it and read it. Because <laughs> I was just like, th this is just, like, burger, but less fun. Alright. Grilled chicken is K. Tomato, bacon, Swiss top bun. Okay. No, 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 no. In 1914, moments before the United States was, end was to enter the Great War, General McCarver made a startling discovery. I think I've read this one, actually. Yeah, the high tote protein count is... <laughs> a grilled, healthier version of the chicken sandwich. In 1914, moments before the United States was to enter the Great War, General McCarver made a startling discovery... Are these two identical? I think they are, except for like this. Huh, that's kind of lazy, honestly. Hmm. <laughs> I do need seven points in the menu. I'll put grilled chicken sandwich on. That's three points right off the bat. What is this? This is a one, uh, one rank. 
Moussaka is an eggplant, oh god, I hate eggplant, based dish best known for being the first food eaten on the moon during humanity's triumphant return to the celestial body in 2040. After stepping onto the lunar surface, astronaut I Ayaka March famously proclaimed this is another small step for man, another giant leap for mankind, for asking viewers to show some love in the chat and follow her to, to uh, Fritbo. Despite her exceptional physical and mental capacities, March had a, seri a series of unusual food allergies, and as a result was only able to consume eggplant-based meals that contained meat and were called mos masaka. Today, masaka is also consumed by children who dream of eating egg egg eggplant on the moon. That caught me off guard. <laughs> Show some love in the chat. <laughs> right, crumbs? You're not gonna, like, even it out? Okay. Meat. Potato. Eggplant. What is pachamal? That's gonna cook. That cooks quickly, too. I'm gonna look up what that is real quick. Chamel sauce. Huh. It's a little similar to Alfredo sauce. Interesting. That makes a lot, too. Okay, yeah, I can see why that's a one star. It's a lot of keystrokes, but like it's probably gonna gonna keep it good for a while. What about menudo, also known as pa uh, pancita or mole de panza? Menudo is a traditional Mexican soup feature uh, featuring a red chili pepper ba um, base and cow tripe broth. Due to the soup's complexity, it typically requires four to six cooks, leading to the tradition of menudo to be created by and for the whole family. This has in turn led to menudo. Um, Menudo being a popular dish for celebrating births, weddings, and other occasions for which families gather. However, after the Blue War made it difficult for families to gather together for long periods of time, Menudo is now most often uh, prepared by single chefs who, lo um, who work lo long hours in non-idyllic conditions, such as in kitchens or roaming food trucks that battle each other for, a ro uh, for, for road and cooking supremacy. As, the, as a result, the modern recipe has been modified to require fewer ingredients, hands, and causes for celebration. <laughs> Ladder which are especially scarce. Oh god, uh... Pinkatrotters? Are those pig feet? Or is that pig feet? Interesting. I don't know what gua peppers is. Onions. Cumin... SD? Is that like what it comes from? Cilantro. Beef. Bay leaf. E-G-N-U-C-B-L. It seems like to, it wants every, um... <clears throat> it wants every uh, ingredient every time. So it's more about going down the list on this one. It only makes three, though. That's kind of bad. Okay. That does not... That, that does not feel like a one. We'll put it on, though. One more holding station. I, I'm gonna put chicken nuggets on. It's easy, and I don't really care. <laughs> what is gelato like in this one? Gelato was invented by Ber Bernardo Butalenti. As an accomplished stage designer, architect, military engineer, and artist, Bo Lenti was a true Renaissance man. This bode well for him as he was born with, with the Renaissance was in full swing and had already produced Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel ceiling, Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa, and Rousseau's living, de uh, living dirt. Inspired by these masterpieces, Bo Lenti grew tired of being a, tr um, a traditional artist and engineer and dreamed of developing a food that could be considered art itself. Fascinated by the process of freezing, he began uh, to experiment with freezing meats and bread, but found that they became much more difficult to eat and uh, or taste as a result. He then froze things that were not so typically considered food, but was disappointed to discover that frozen influenza geared a few for European customers. Upon learning that, the Grand Duke Co Co Cosimo del Mercedi wanted him to organize a lavish feast to celebrate with Spanish depu um, deputation. 
But Buolinti hastily froze a mixture of cream, milk, and sugar that he had flavored with lemon juice. Upon tasting it, the Grand Duke advised Buolinti to not quit his day job, and hired him to design his new villa to keep him focused on his true talents. However, the wor um, word of the gelato spread uh, from the other attendees of the feast, and it, continues, and it continues to be enjoyed to this day. That's a special order. Okay, so is it just a bunch of... Okay, so it's one keystroke, but there's like several dozen things you can do. Vanilla, strawberry, chocolate, mango, lemon zest, red velvet. Dragon fruit, I think? That looks like the color of dragon fruit. Pistachio. Zabione. Strassia. I don't know what that is. Coffee, peach, amarina, cotton candy, hazelnut, cheesecake, caramel, banana, kiwi, puffo. No, I no idea what puffo is. Peppermint, cinnamon, raspberry, and cookie cream. So you just put it in. Pistachio is usually I, so that's a little confusing. Okay, okay. So I gotta pay attention to the color of that thing I take in order to do that one well. Oh, I don't want to get much more complicated. We made Salisbury steak in the original. I think I'm okay at this one. I think we read that uh, that in the original too. Okay, so nine point menu. Alright, let's go, my army of Sunday plushes. Let's go. <laughs> oh wait, doesn't this have two steps? Yeah, I think it does. Okay, uh, what do we need more of? We're gonna need a lot of this. DRS, 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 US, and then it's like you put it down and yeah, it's like one of several gravies. DRS, and a gelato. Cookies and cream is on the last page, I remember that. Okay, uh, this one, tomato, bacon, Swiss, top bun. Tomato, bacon, Swiss, top bun. Okay, are we out of anything? We're out of chicken nuggets. Okay, let's make some more while we're at it, because we're going to need a little bit more. Okay, those two. Gravy. Uh, Stalzeri steak, gravy. Oh, we're out of, uh, hold on. Of course, we're out of that. P-G-N-U-C-B-L. Hold on. Uh, oh! K-T-B-S-O. Swiss pickle top bun. Oh, uh oh. Okay. P G N U C B L. Oh, you don't have to do it in order either. Uh wait, no, I don't need that. Um Hold on. F6, what is it? Ah just missed that one. K tomato lettuce bacon Swiss top bun. Okay, we need more of this. P G N U Okay, let's throw out some of this bad stuff. It seems like the most um of those we're gonna get is eight, just looking at that. Okay, what do we need now? No Masaka. A bunch of this, though. Or a little bit of this. U-C-B-L. Okay, this one, this next stop is not that far away. Just one order of chicken nuggets, really? I don't believe that. <laughs> Cheesecake is on the pink. It's C. Okay, 
Yeah, our stuff is still cooking. Might as well start doing that so we can, like, get some more of the... Okay. Chicken Swiss Pickle Top Bun. Chicken Swiss Pickle Top Bun. Regular Gravy. Chicken Tomato Lettuce Pickle Top Bun. Okay. What do we need? Lots of this. M-P-E-C. Uh... E-G-N-U-C-B-L. E-G... N U C B L. No chicken sandwiches. That's easy to make, so I think I'll spend the, the rest of my time making this, because it's way more time consuming, even if it is kind of easy. E G N U C B L. Okay, let's focus on these now. The heck is that? Well, it's Z, obviously. R, that's easy. Okay. D R S. Uh, hold on. U S. D-R-S. Lemon Zest is an L. Ice cream with lemon zest in it actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> oh, we're gonna need more of this. Okay, uh, oh, hold on. Be more chicken nuggets, too. And more of this. Mushroom gravy. I'll get better at min-maxing stuff by the, uh, all this by the end of the game, I, I swear. Congratulations. That was perfect. Okay. Need some of this. P-G-N-U-C-B-L. Almost there. Next approaching. Rich coffee, that's what it stands for. Oh, that actually looks pretty good. <laughs> I hate coffee in real life, but like I like coffee-flavored things, if that makes sense. Two remaining. Wow, that, that was the easiest stop yet. Okay. Last one coming up, and it's probably going to be a big one. Oh, yeah, look at some of those. Uh, P-G-N-U-C-B-L. E-G-N-U-C-B-L. Uh, that's a lot of chicken sandwiches. Hold on. No. Chicken nuggets. Now we can start these. Okay, cinnamon is I. I think that's consistent, though it's not like cinnamon is in many things anyway. Do those right now. U.S. Okay, um, eight. Dragon fruit is D. You know, dragon fruit actually doesn't have much of a taste to it. What is that? That, okay. KTL Pickles Top Bun. Tomato Lettuce Bacon Swiss Cheese Top Bun. Um, regular Gravy. Okay, we're out of some stuff. We're out of Chicken Nuggets. Steak, Onion Gravy. Uh, we are out of that as well. PGNU... Smash the keyboard. <laughs> Chicken Tomato Bacon Swiss Cheese Top Bun. Chicken, tomato, bacon, Swiss cheese, top bun. Chicken, tomato, lettuce, bacon, Swiss cheese, top bun. Oh god, that's a lot of... We're gonna need some more. Um, okay. Wait, wh what else are we missing? That. B-M-P-E-C. Uh, wait, what, what is nine? Oh. Good, 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 good. Uh, what else do we need? This. P-G-N-U-C-B-L. E. B. Ooh, you're, you're impatient. Um, okay. Need some more of these. I think we're gonna need like one more batch. Yeah. Oh, okay. We almost got this. I think we're gonna get a silver on this one. You know, I'm surprised I don't like get penalized for taking too much time during moments like this. Like, I don't know. Yumgurt and cheesy buns. <laughs> 
So I'll very rarely get a chance to look at the background in this game because there's so much going on. <laughs> okay, I thought I messed that one up for a second. Oh, all right, all right, that one was tough. Uh, <laughs> tougher. Not bad. Not bad. I think I messed up. I messed up one order, and I think I just ran out of time for one of them. Okay. E. Ah, oh, cooks are delicious too. Classics. Simmered Street. Well, let's try it. Yep, these are all items from the second game. <laughs> A oh, ribs isn't that hard. Ribs are po are a popular cut of meat, usually consisting of a, the less meaty part of the chops and cooked at, at at a slab rather than cut into individual ribs. Ribs are typically slowly roasted or grilled for as long as 10 to 12 minutes for maximum tenderness. After preparing, ribs are then typically torn apart by hand in a messy fashion so as to remind the eater of their humble origins as hunter-gatherers who are not yet who have not yet invented silverware, which is why they are typically served with wet naps. Competitions are often held to see who can eat uh, ribs the sloppiest, with notable two-timer winner Nick Quack from Australia managing to somehow get more barbecue sauce on himself than was originally present on the ribs he was given. <laughs> that is gross. Uh, I, I remember how to make that one, though. I remember liking this item a lot. Yeah. Yaki to, um... Tamarokoshi is a Japanese dish of grilled corn on the cob that is coated with a glaze made of soy sauce, mirin, sugar, and other seasonings. Though little is known about the exact origins of the dish, it is widely believed that either a Japanese person or a person residing in Japan had access to cobs of corn and wanted to spice up the dish a bit before eating it themselves or serving to others. This person then presumably grilled the cobs of corn to cook the cob, although some speculate that this might have been a failed attempt to invent popcorn. The person then seemingly uh, either ate or did not eat the corn before deciding to concoct a glaze of the cob, so they doubtless mixed together soy sauce, mirin, sugar, and other seasonings either immediately or after a period of trial and error. Some say this food inspired the phrase cobbled together, which, uh, which may or may, may not be true. Why is it so unsure? That is a weird description for that item. Uh, Did I ever make stew in the or in two? Actually, great um grilled griddled eggs. Eggs ready for entree servings, including scrambled. Traditionally, scrambled eggs were made by whisking eggs in a bowl with milk, then lightly cooking the mixture in a pan. According to recent uh, res recent studies, however, most scrambled eggs are made by people who have failed to correctly flip the omelet. While contentious, some food critics believe. I think I've read this one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I remember liking that one a lot because I kind of agreed with it. One more hold station item. Pulp pork sandwich is actually really fun to make in this game. Aside from being delicious, pulp pork sandwiches are perhaps most well known for their involvement in the re uh, recovery of a lost girl. In 1957, a Los Angeles private detective named Sergeant Wake was hired to locate a missing teenage girl by her distraught mother. The girl's name was Elizabeth, and she was last seen by her father when he saw her at a nearby park that he drove past every day on the way home from work. The father had been kicked out of Elizabeth's mother's for two years beforehand for spending too much time and not making enough money down at the racetracks, was now dating one of his co-workers named Cheryl. 
Cheryl's brother Danny owned a, di uh, a diner right next to the park where Elizabeth was last seen, and saw her come into the diner earlier that day before going missing. Even more coincidentally, Danny's daughter was Elizabeth's best friend from grade school, but as Danny understood it, the two had a, had a falling out sometime in the early weeks of high, uh, of high school, and so she didn't come around to his house anymore. Private Detective Sergeant Wake was weeks into his investigation when a series of uh, clues finally led him to a diner, where he asked Danny if he remembered what Elizabeth had come in for on the day she disappeared. Danny recalled Elizabeth ordering a pulled pork sandwich. This puzzled Sergeant Wake as Elizabeth's mother had told him earlier that Elizabeth was a vegetarian. The private detective asked Danny if anyone else uh, seemed to particularly fond of pulled pork sandwiches, and Dana responded that his sister's boyfriend asked for them all the time to take up with him down to the racetrack. Armed with nothing but this new information, a sense of duty, and his pistol, Sergeant Wake conducted a thorough sweep of the racetrack in the deep of night, where he found Elizabeth being held captive by her father, whose gamble addiction drove him to force her to spend all day at the track making bets on, on, in his name. It turns out that shortly after kidnapping Elizabeth, his fa her father forced her to purchase some uh, some dinner at a diner before heading to his home. In a discreet uh, a discreet city for help, she uh, help cry for help. She ordered the one food that she knew would tip off the right people, while not drawing suspicion from her oblivious father. Sergeant Wake was recently a bullet wound received a bullet wound while battling Elizabeth's father for her freedom, but subsequently made a full recovery. Today, a large light a larger than life statue of Sergeant Wake. Holding a pulled pork sandwich can be seen in the corner of Paramount in Hardwick. <laughs> what a story. Oh my god. <laughs> I just want to check if this is the one I think it is. There were like two items that were a bit like this. So yeah, it's PAS. That one's simple. I guess I'll have a cook, actually. And it's like pork sauce coleslaw bun. Still have that muscle memory. And sometimes they don't want coleslaw. God, I, I got really fast at that one in two. <laughs> we are definitely putting that on the menu. Uh, where, where is it? Oh my god, I didn't realize there was this much stuff we could put on. Uh... Wait, where is it? <laughs> where is my item I just bought? Did I buy it? Oh, I'm confused. Um. Okay, it is alphabetical, though. God, I'm an idiot. Okay, um. What else can we put on? Oh, calzones. Calzones were kind of tough. You know, I really like this item, but I don't think I ever made it. In this one, dessert shooters are mantered desserts traditionally served in a shot glass. Although the conceptual or, or I, I don't think I ever bought it. Although the conceptual origin of dessert shooters is unknown, it is believed that dessert shooters were created by, in, by the United States government in the mid 90s as a response to the rising rates of obese and otherwise unhealthy American citizens. As dessert often held high calorie sugar and fats, which can coincidentally are considered very delicious, Americans began eating larger and larger portions of desserts, leading to higher health risks nationwide. Limited knowledge of the reason for the sudden decline in health nationwide, and even more limited knowledge of how to deal with it, the government determined that eating several smaller portions of desserts would be significantly healthier than eating one larger portion of equal nutritional value. The plan failed at first, but the popular dessert shooters quickly uh, stopped and eventually went, uh, were eaten th uh, three at one at three at a time instead of by the dozen, leading to the government to claim their efforts as as a victory in the long run. And you put three in a serving. That's funny. <laughs> okay, we gotta put some simpler stuff on. Sasha's sauerkraut is pretty easy, so... Yeah, ten point menu. Is that our highest point yet? I think it might be. All right, chef. 
Show me what you got. Child's play. I love doing that. <laughs> okay, moose, moose, cheesecake. It's the same as I remember. Tiramisu, tiramisu, banana cream. Cheesecake, banana cream, key lime. Also, how do you hold it in that box? Like, do you actually, like, lower it? <laughs> oh, whoa, that only makes four. I feel like that, that was more in the original. Oh, wait, wait, there's still two more. C-L-K-S-U. Okay. I messed that up. <laughs> Rib sauce season. Corn, soy sauce, butter. Uh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, hold on. Okay, okay, hold on. <laughs> I think I've been off more than I could chew here. <clears throat> on it, chef. Yep, thank you. Okay, we need some more pulled pork, and we need some more of these. Wow, there are five stops to this one? Oh my god. <clears throat> I didn't have to make it this hard on myself, but I like these items from two. Oh. Okay, didn't mess that up. Need some more of these two. That'll buy us some time. Okay. Ah! Didn't want cabbage or coleslaw on that. I said I was fast at it, I didn't say I was accurate at it. <clears throat> oh my god, that was rough. Okay, what do we need for the next one? R.E.S. I'm saying we can make at least two of these. Um, let's make at least two of these as well. Okay. And eggs. We only need one serving of eggs. Cheesecake, banana cream, key lime. Oops. Okay, we need... And we need... Okay. What is seven? Okay. Was a waste. Okay, let's empty all of these. So number six, R S U. Okay, what do we need now? This is a small stop coming up. We only need a few of these.
Oh, that's a lot of stuff I'm not going to have by the time we get there. Oops. Wait. Uh oh. Uh. I didn't even start these yet. Cheesecake, CL. Uh-oh. Um, C, R, 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 R. Oh, we need more. Um. Oh, oh I hit the wrong button there. So what is this Spongebob sounding music we got right now? <laughs> uh, get some more eggs. I got to, how did I do that one right? I just kind of mashed buttons there. <laughs> It's just you. <clears throat> okay. This is a small final stop. say that is kind of neat though that it like practically the um the rush hour can be at different uh points of the day because of that which is kind of cool Oh, that wasn't that bad. I think I got a bronze on that. No, I got a silver. Well, chef, I think we have room for improvement. <laughs> you did your best, and that counts for something. That counts for everything. Good job, chef. We'll get him next time. Okay. So that was E. Let's do an F1. Oh, we don't have enough for this. Okay. Have we done chilled yet? I don't think- I, I know we've done bring your own barbecue. Ooh. Have we done time to dine as well? Oh, it tells you how many stops and like how long it is up here. Okay, interesting. We get another food truck attack on this one. I wonder if, like, the different food trucks... I'm assuming there are more food trucks that attack you than just, like, the seafood one from the second game. What's this? Salcillo tacos. Interesting. Baklava is a sweet dessert pastry created with chopped nuts, syrup, or honey, and layers of phyllo pastry. In the 18th century, most baklava in the Ottoman Empire was created by Vil Vulcan, an eccentric dessert factory owner. In, a, in 
1743, the aging Vilvorkin, oh, Vilvorkin announced five golden tickets <laughs> would be hidden inside pieces of his desserts, giving five lucky individuals the opportunity to take over Velivorkin's factory and all of its accompanying health and safety violations. <laughs> Unfortunately the, uh, for Valley Vulcan, two of the tickets were disposed of after not being sold before the baklava passed its expiration date. Another was presumed missing after the caravan carrying it was hijacked, and another was destroyed with uh, the merchant shop burnt down. To make matters worse, the fifth ticket fell into the hands of an employee from the Ottoman Empire's Department of Labor, who upon arriving at the factory found every evidence of slavery, food safety violations, and tax avoidance. Subsequently, Veli Vulcan's factory was closed. While Veli Vulcan's factory had been relegated to history, his absence left a hole in the market that was quickly filled by an independent baker who continued to make baklava to this day. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you know, I think there was like a game theory episode about like, that would have been film theory about like, if, if that factory was real, how many OSHA violations would it break? Would it be breaking? And uh, the answer is a lot. <laughs> okay. There's one thing I learned from that video. It's it's never underestimate the power of guardrails. Because <laughs> they can really get you out of a lot of legal trouble sometimes. Oh, I got a Laret. Okay. You can do that quickly. That's good to know. They make seven. That's a good amount for something like that. That actually feels like a zero almost, but I'll, I'll put it on. Chili was in two. I remember making chili. Originating in Texas in the mid-1800s, chili is a delicious Southwest staple that has uh, delayed uh, connoisseurs for centuries. Its mix of delicious meats and vegetables in a secret sauce is a to-go favorite for those who like a little kick in their step. Its surge in popularity in recent years is attributed to many things. The leading trend in Southwest dishes making their way across the world, the rise of chili cook-offs across the country, and, and as a leading cause of the significant decrease in ver uh, verifiable ghost sightings by ghost chasers. Ghost chasers have determined that the unique mixture of beans meat- I think I've read this one, actually. <laughs> when the floating spirits are absolutely repulsed by the odor and, ta and taste held within due to its tendency to melt their ghostly flesh. Yeah. How do you make this one again? I kind of forgot. O. M. Beans. Corn. Tomato. Okay, yeah, that's about what I remember. We'll add that. What is this one? A baked rice cake typically eaten for breakfast during the Christmas season. Actually, I think I have made that one. Churros is easy. Um, hot dog isn't that hard. Hmm. Let's do ballpark burgers. Ooh, ice cream sundae. Oh, this one! Oh my god. This was a tough one. I never bought it. Okonomiyaka. With a name that literally translates to grow what you like. <laughs> The okonomiyaka is a, t a type of Japanese pancake may have toppings that vary by region, through cabbage is almost always included. Though there are popular versions of the dish, theoretically anything thrown in with the batter and pan fr uh, fried on both sides can be uh, considered omo okoyomiyaki. Believers of this, omoyomiyaki is often used as a symbol of unity, inclusion, and diversity. Often along with the phrases, there's an Okoyomiyaki for everyone, and everyone has one thing in common, we all love Okonomiyaki. Though the exact origins of these phrases are unknown, evidence suggests they were originally crafted by an adv advertising agency to promote sales of the dish rather than uh, an actual sense of unity and better state of society. I- I- <laughs> I'm gonna buy it. I, I think I will try to make that today, why the heck not? I'm not putting ice cream sundae on there, I'll put cookies on because that's super easy. Oh, I feel like I should make one of these easier, though, to compensate, because that, that is kind of a hard item. I mean, it's very lateral what you have to do to make it, but, like, it's very time-consuming. 
What is this one? Med Medovic. Medovic is a sponge cake that was created in 19th century by a young chef who sought to impress Empress Elizabeth Al Alexienvia, the wife of Alexander I. When Elizabeth found um, found honey disgusting, the chef was uh, was new in the kitchen and unaware of this fact, and the other kitchen help uh, th thought it would be amusing to not tell him. Fortunately, having not eaten honey in quite some time, Elizabeth failed to identify the feature ingredient in the young chef's cake and ate it with enthusiasm. She then look, uh, took it upon herself to add the young chef to her grown list of affairs, much to his delight in the, in the chagrin of the other kitchen help, who had to cover for him in the kitchen whenever he spent time with the empress. Learning from the era, they always cooked things that people didn't like from the day forward. <laughs> so this has honey in it. What else is it? Is honey is usually why, from what I remember? Are you mad? Okay. Uh, so it's like grilled cheese where it's just a bunch of random buttons. <laughs> Makes 10 though, which is quite a lot. Okay, let's do it. 11 point menu. This ought to be tough. Oh god. Okay, egg, chow mein, pancake, cabbage. You want shrimp on this one. Sprout, bacon. We are nearing the next stop. Oh god, there's more. I forgot there's more you have to do with this one. H Y A B Oops. Um Oh god. Egg, chow mein, pancake, cabbage, squid, sprout, bacon. Uh, six. E, W, P, C, squid, okay. Cheese, coconut. Cheese, coconut. O, S, H, nori, C stripes. Yes! I did that perfectly. Bacon, cheese, cheese, tomato, regular bun. Okay, cheese, coconut. Cheese coconut. Meat pickle bun. Wait. Oh, I hit O for top bun. Oops, like I was making chicken sam or salad. Nori. Okay, cheese coconut. Uh oh god, we gotta make more. Um Okay, uh see Oh god. Uh okay, no. <laughs> we're, we're not doing that. <laughs> We'll try something a little easier. Take that off. I'm sorry, but I can't do that right now. Uh, wait, what? Did I hit back by accident? Isn't a K in Honey Crisp? <laughs> I swear those are just complete random. Okay, R I S H N. R I S H N. R no, I'm not. Uh, R I S H N. R I S H N. I'm getting good at this one. Sugar cookies. 
Meat, bacon, cheese, cheese, tomato. Regular bun is R. I gotta keep that in mind. O C or C O. P I. Uh. Crap. Um. <laughs> Okay, are we out of something already? We're out of churros. Uh, wait, did I? Oh, I thought I put like two helpings of it on. Ooh! Okay, now we need some more of these. Okay, um... Need some more baklava, too. Wait, no, we need more... Oh, God. E-D-O-V-I-K-S. We're out of something else as well. Okay, you're almost impatient. B-L-L-T-R. We out of something? We're out of churros again. We're gonna need some more of those. Just enough to make those. Oatmeal, oatmeal, peanut butter, R I H S N, R H S N. Okay, that's a lot of ballpark burgers. Hold on a second. Meat pickle bun. Meat meat cheese bun. Meat bacon cheese cheese tomato bun. Meat lettuce tomato onion bun. Meat meat bun. Meat bacon cheese cheese tomato bun. Meat pickle bun. Okay. No, none of that is needed for the next one. M-E-D-O-V-I-K-S. Repeat, we need no we need no baklava for the next uh, for the next stop. Seems like a small stop, honestly. Yeah, we're almost already there. Sugar cookies, sugar cookies. Meat, lettuce, tomato, onion, bun. Meat, lettuce, tomato, onion, bun. Okay. Your proficiency within the kitchen is unmatched. Let's do that again. Incoming food truck. Oh god. Okay, here we go. What are you gonna take out? Okay, you're taking out that one. We can deal with that. Um Just don't, but just don't mind him. <laughs> what holding station do they take out? We're gonna need more of these two. Okay. R I H S N. R I H S N. Could you give me like a minute? Uh, R I H S N. Chocolate chip, candy, sugar, dark chocolate, peanut butter, candy, candy. Uh oh God. Hold on, um, meat, pickle, bun. I'm just gonna, like, make one of these. It's, it's very inefficient, but, nah. Meat, meat, bun. Okay, make some of this now. Wait, no, not that, ah! Churros, D, okay. Oh, 
We're out of something. Uh, we are out of baklava. Did I screw that up? I screwed that up. Okay, we need more... Actually, this will give us some time to work on some other stuff we gotta do. Okay, um... Cheese coconut. Cheese coconut. It's more of that. Holding station is empty on that. Oh god, this one's time consuming. O V I K S. What else do we need? Churros. Okay, let's start doing these. Meat, lettuce, tomato, onion, bun. Meat, meat, cheese, bun. Meat, meat, bun. Meat, meat, bun. Meat, pickles, bun. Meat, meat, bun. Meat, pickles, bun. Meat, meat, cheese, bun. That's the last one. Okay. Wow, not a single one of those ones? Or the, like, coconut leaf one that I always forget the name of? <laughs> R-I-H-N. Oh, this is the final, uh, stop, actually. Yeah, you're the last one, dude. Why is there just a random couch out there? <laughs> that was rough. I think I got a bronze on that, but... Oh my god, it's easier to get silver than I thought it would be. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Also, is this supposed to be Whisk and Cleave, but like human or something? <laughs> Okay. We got some more stuff we can upgrade. Upgrade the truck. Okay, now I said before that, um, I think 10 whole uh, primary stations is my limit. So I am gonna unlock these just so I can get to these, but I'm probably gonna stick it, uh, keep it to 10 personally. Yeah, 14 is just way too much for me. That would be very useful. Especially if I keep putting on these complex items. How does that work? Rejuvenator. Interesting. But... Serving cloner? Wait. <laughs> I looked at the abilities earlier, but I never looked at, like, the names of them. That's weird. I think working towards this would be better. Then we'll turn it off. <laughs> I'm not that good at this game. <laughs> I think I'll do one more day. Rolls and sizzling beef. That's a new one, I think. King potato. Wait. Oh my god. Did they make the potato from the first one? Like, make it return? 
Originating in modern-day southern Peru, the potato has grown to become a staple crop worldwide. Famously, the potato's importance of humanity's diet led to the Irish potato famine, in which potato blight infl infected crops across Europe leading to mass hunger and 100,000 deaths. Baked potatoes, however, have never suffered blight and are a delicious fluffy creation often topped with butter, sour cream, cheese, or meat. Because of their superior resistance to disease, much effort has been put into breeding a plant that yields baked potatoes rather than uncooked potatoes, as this would efficiently eliminate the possibility for future potato famines. Although the progress in the endeavor has been non-existent, this has stopped the legion of individuals who don't understand biology from continuing to try. <clears throat> I am not planning to put this on the menu for the day, but... BIG POTATOES! Does that mean only make three? Well, I didn't realize it was just a huge potato. I thought, like, you know, just a deluxe set of items can be put on the potato. You know, now that I think about it, I don't think I'm going to, uh... Yeah, it does only make three. Cut it. Butter it. Add beef. Sour cream. Cheese. Chili. Jalapenos, bacon, olives. I screwed that up somewhere. You know, I don't think I'm going to do another day now that I think about it, but I would like to, like, purchase a bunch of items. Because I have a lot of fun just reading these. Cut. Butter, broccoli. Oops, nope. Cut. Butter, chicken. Sour cream. Cheese. Chives is I. Jalapeno, butter, all lives. Yes. Look at that list of ingredients. That is kind of absurd. Bacon and chicken. Sour cream, cheese, chili, chives. Ham is A. Jalapeno, bacon, all. That is a fully loaded potato. Oh my god. Maybe I can practice these off screen now that they're on my menu. What is deluxe poutine? On October 14th, 1775, British chef... You know, if I'm going to be unlocking, um, just anything, really, I might as well go to food catalog to do it. Can I sort them by difficulty? I rank. Okay, there we go. Not bought yet. Ah, uh, where to go? Here we go. On October 14th, 17, uh, 1775, British chef Putnam Chalmondillery tasted poutine for the first time thanks to Quebec Act that passes the previous year. Cronomondelli was enchanted by the the Kipikos dish that his personal um that his personal diary, which until then was filled with recipe ideas, found memories from the kitchen. And lewd drawings of anthropomorphized kitchen utensils suddenly became completely de uh, de dedicated to his un unrequired passionate feelings towards the dish, including sonnets and uh, more crude drawings. Finally, on March 14, 1778, Cro Crollo Modelli had a, um, had a parent uh, moment of clarity during which he wrote several pages lamenting his decision to eat nothing but poutine for the past uh, tw uh, 29 months and to trade his left thumb for more gravy, followed by a dozen pages containing new recipes that he thought might be able to help him get back on track. A fortune despite having the name like King's Knotted Noodles, each recipe was in fact a variation of poutine with additional toppings. All that's a, um, and all subsequent pages reverted back to uh, poutine uh, poetry and smut. Upon his death in 1979, the recipes in his diary were released as deluxe poutine which should be enjoyed cautiously. Why was that such a word obstacle course for me? Like, okay, so it starts like regular poutine. You make some fries. I'm assuming this is gonna be like pot baked potato to king potato where like the main difference is that there's just like a dozen more ingredients you can use. Cause I see like eggs on there. 
I see Chai's, which weren't in the original, I think. Okay. Okay. Brown gravy, cheese curds, chili sauce, bacon and mac and cheese. Chocolate sauce? That can't be what that stands for. Okay. Smoked meat, braised beef, which is R. Chicken and peas, coleslaw, bacon, ham bits, pepperoni, mushroom pepper, hot dog slices. We have never made something that requires specifically hot dog slices before. And... Wow, that is complicated. Um, it does make a lot, though, at least. Okay, so gravy is G. Braised beef. Chicken. That's still consistent. So lobster is sometimes O and sometimes B. That's so inconsistent. Wait, you can put multiple cheese curds on? Interesting. That can't be chocolate sauce. On... On poutine? Oh my god, it is! Who puts chocolate on french fries? I've never heard that before. That is weird. Oh, Taiwanese shaved ice is back. Okay, I grew an appreciation for this one by the end of the, uh... By the end of the last game, so I'm just gonna buy that one outright. I really liked making cake by the end of the second game, too. The history of cakes is as long as history itself. Although cakes were first created by the ancient Egyptians, they are quite different from what we know as cakes today and were comparable to sweetened bread. The word cake itself originated with the Vikings. It's because of these ancient origins that cake is now commonly served as a sweet dis dessert at parties and as a sign and as a sign of respect and admiration for how ancient civilizations somehow may survive without electricity or toilets. With each bite um bite of sweet sugary cake, we celebrate and honor those poor standards of living. Cakes have expanded in recent years to include a number of variations, including sponge cake, coffee cake, and bone cake. Bone cakes? Though the common butter cakes are often large, round, or square creations covered in frosting, which are then sliced up into slices and served individually. There is a miniature uh, deviation known as the cupcake, which is small, round, and only has frosting on top to serve as a reminder that even the best things in life will be tampered with. This is probably still the same. Yeah, banana. Now, this is like grilled cheese where, like, it kind of... It require it has like multiple button presses for the same ingredient, but like I got kinda used to how it worked in this game. Okay, it's like, yeah. Layer for cake layer. Vanilla layer vanilla layer and then frost the whole thing. I kind of liked making this one. Oh, oysters! I wanted to make oysters. In, in two, but I never unlocked it. It's a delicacy. Oysters are a saltwater mollusk that can be eaten both cooked and raw. Evidence shows that oysters were commonly eaten along coastal regions as far back as prehistory, and may even pred uh, predict the eating of fish. A common folklore states that the oysters are only safe to eat in most contained letter R, which has coincidentally been proving scientifically true as in the Northern Hemisphere, those tend to be the months where they, they are not spoiled by the summer heat. In one particular uh, record, record event, a middle-aged man named Larry Craig Orion spent a particularly hot summer eagerly waiting for September to roll around so he could enjoy his favorite food again. On August 31st, Orion could not wait any longer, so he, fi he fished and ate a whole pound of oysters. Fortunately, he became violently ill as a result and was rushed to the hospital where he was treated for impa impatience. This was like a weird minigame, but I kind of liked it. Yeah, it's it's more it's sim more simple than you would expect it to be.
What is this one? This is new to this game. A king cake is an oval braided cake sprinkled with colored sugar and topped with a small trinket. The first king cake was created in 15th century France as a way to ass of ass ass assassinating King Edward IV. Sick and tired of losing w uh, wars in Britain, France baked the British monarch a cake which they claimed was a way of congratulating the king for his numerous military victories. Unbeknownst to King Edward IV, a small ch a choking hazard was planted inside the cake, and upon consuming it, the king choked and died. Realizing at once uh, fr that France had just assassinated the king, the royal families announced the king had died from natural causes and quietly replaced him with his son, King Edward V. France congratulated the new king of a cake which also contained a choking hazard. Embarrassed that France had just assassinated two kings, the royal family placed a ban on Marks consuming cake, making King Edward V the last king to eat cake or experience joy. Wow. Uh, so how do you make this? Special order. Dough? Oh, this looks complicated. Cinnamon. Pecan. Raisins. Baby? What? Roll, shape, cut. You put a little... <laughs> Is it like a Kinder Egg thing where it's like a little toy you put in? Glaze and sugar. That is weird. Uh... <sighs> A little plastic baby in it. <laughs> Let's buy this because I, I I I bought I used that a lot in the original. Yeah, I remember reading about Big Brisky. Those bananas were fun to make. I'm just gonna buy like a bunch of level ones. Or. Nah. Specialty donuts is surprisingly easy. Specialty donuts were invented in 1865, shortly after the, con the Confederate Army surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant. Grant, who had th uh, thorough knowledge of the history of many pastry treats, understood the significance of donuts in the creation of the United States, in which the Confederate themselves. Commemorate themselves along with the historic re reunification of the nation. Since donuts up until uh, up until that point were made with a simple glazed coating, which made them almost white in appearance, Grant thought it fitted to mark the victories and ramifications by developing new types of donuts that celebrated the diversity of the free America Americans through bright colors, glazes, and toppings, such as nuts and sprinkles. Though seen as very controversial at the time, Grant, of course it was, Grant would utilize his, uh, his later sta status as president to market the creation across the nation and around the world, leading to a surge in their popularity overall in overall acceptance for treats that looked dif um, different than what people were used to. This one, like, isn't that bad from what I remember. You put some donuts in, you fry them. And then it's just like, you place him down, you ice him? Yeah, it's surprisingly easy. What about this one? The katsu cons consists of deep-fried pork cutlets served with Worcestershire sauce, rice, and salad. Tok uh, tokatsu uh, creation is largely credited to Japanese music teacher Asao Shuji, while translating the iconic hymn um, Dai's Ar... Ar array from Latin to Japanese. Suji realized that the 13th century Georgian, Georgian chant wasn't actually about the Day of Wrath, as previously believed, but instead a recipe for a delicious pork dish. After translating other Georgian chants, Suji uh, d discovered dozens of other recipes. Suji worked at, um, as a music teacher for many more years until he was fired for one day arriving to work 10 minutes late. To make ends meet, Suji published his findings in a book which consisted of recipes and music theory. Or cutlets dunk. Why are they like yellow? Oh, is that like the batter? Interesting. 
You know, is it weird that I've never... <clears throat> I've never fried food? I don't know, like... <laughs> pork? Wait, pork? Cucumber? Lettuce, tomato? That actually looks pretty good. I feel like I would want a little bit of sauce with it, but like... I like dry food, but like not that dry. And it doesn't it doesn't seem like it matters what order you do it in either. I've seen this a couple times. I'm curious what this is. Can eating Lao Lao help you see God? No, according to doctors and scientists, despite the, the seemingly conclusive analysis, Americans continued to believe otherwise after Missy Mar uh, Mar Martin's claim that taro wrapped pork dish lets you connect with a, <clears throat> of a higher power while on a trip to Hawaii in 1957. The claim brought her uh, brought her fame and fortune as uh, Martins was showered with a, with a lucrative book deal, an exclusive interview with, uh, with Tapas Magazine, and a permanent position on a leading breakfast show. The government was simply in, intrigued, and in 1959 made Hawaii an official American state just in case her claims turned out to be true. <laughs> <laughs> to the country's dismay, Martin's fame came crumbling down in 1961 when it was revealed her uh, be her benefic vision was a result of uh, prescription medication in inhaling volcanic gas from a recent eruption and from getting hit on by the um on the head by a falling coconut. Uh, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Another special order. Taro leaf seasoned meat. Wait. Oh, you put two down. One seasoned meat, and you wrap it. That can be done really quickly. And you can just serve it after that. Okay. Well, we're out of money. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty then. I think that'll be enough for this episode. Off screen, I'll probably uh, get some gold medals and stuff I played before, and stuff that like involves a uh, involves like a uh, like a uh, keywords. I'm gonna put it that I haven't done yet, or that I have done. The new foods. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll be good. Okay. Well, I'll see you folks later. Thanks for watching.